for more on this and infrastructure here in the United States, Jonathan English joins us live now via Skype. He's a fellow at the Marin Institute of Urban Management in New York University. Um, welcome and uh, welcome to the show. Um, this tunnel, and I think we could use all tunnels in, in America that are old, especially on the East Coast, th this is a, a drop in the bucket compared to the infrastructure needs that the country actually needs. I, mean, I suppose it's a good start, but we've heard these announcements before. Is this going to make a difference? Well, this is a this is certainly a well. First, thanks for having me on, and uh, and second, I think this is certainly a, a bit of a keystone project on on the Northeast Corridor. This tunnel, um, as was mentioned before, has long been a bit of a bottleneck. Um, the, the tunnel is is exceptionally old. It was a you know wonder when it was built in the 1870s, uh, but uh, obviously is is now past its best before date. So. By um, by replacing it, it will get rid of one of the key um, the key obstacles a to shorter journey times, but also one of the uh, the frequent causes of delay and 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 bottlenecks on the on the corridor. Uh, Nathan alluded to this earlier about the sort of the political stalemate that exists here in D.C. when you talk about funding large infrastructure projects between, between the EPA, between local citizens, working with the states, working with, working with the different municipalities. There's always somebody who is going to make it difficult to get these projects done in any reasonable amount of time. And this seems to be the case really since the last couple of decades that I've monitored this. I don't see how we're going to speed things up or make things more efficient unless there are laws that are changed on the federal and state level? Well, I guess on that it depends to some extent on the project. Some projects face more environmental opposition than others. Hopefully this one um, will uh, you know, be a relatively consensus type project that, uh, that doesn't face the same amount of opposition. But certainly, yes, you know, doing Doing environmental assessments takes time, and uh, and community opposition uh, has has certainly um, derailed projects in the past. And you know that is one of the big challenges that you always have to always have to make. You know, in the 1960s there was a lot of construction, uh, 1950s and 60s and one before, where you know there was there was a, a you know a top down approach, and you know we need to build this highway here, we need to build this dam here, we need to build you know this rail project. Uh, not too many in the 50s and 60s, but before that, um, here, um, and uh, you know, and, and it, you know, inevitably there will be local consequences. After that, there was more of a rebalancing of, of priorities to, towards you know paying attention to the people that would be displaced, et cetera. And uh, and since that time, um, you know that 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 rebalancing has meant that some of these projects right. can be. Quite a bit trickier to I, I, I hate to do this, but if you look at Europe and, and Asia, and I, I know they're two very different places, but they've both been successful, at least in building a lot of these more modern infrastructure projects, when the U.S., I guess we continue to have this discussion. What are they doing right? Well, I mean, I guess to some extent, there, there are different answers in different cases. W one of them is experience. You know, you you can learn by doing. If you've built a lot of rail projects recently, uh, you get generally not always, but generally you get better at doing it. Uh, you know, if you're expanding your subway system or or your high speed rail network or whatever it might be constantly, um, you know, a country like Spain or or France or or China or 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 Japan, um, they're they're constantly expanding their network or have been. And as a result, uh, you know, they gain a lot of expertise in doing it. The U.S., uh, you know, we've started to see more projects like the Bright Line project in in, um, uh, in Florida and, and what's happening in, in California. And, and now the new round of projects that, that, are, that have been funded for Amtrak, including the Northeast. Um, you know, if, if the expertise built up through those projects uh, helps make future projects a little easier, that will, uh, that will certainly help. I guess another another challenge is the the way that the U.S. has developed. Um, you know, from Boston to Washington, really, there's not a lot of empty land. It's actually quite striking when you when you leave Paris, like you know, other huge cities, you hit farmland before before too long. Uh, whereas when you leave New York, it's almost continuous development to Philly and and beyond. So it does make it a little bit more challenging 
to, you know, there's lots of towns, of course, in Europe, but they're a little bit more compact and contained. The, uh, the, the infrastructure bill that, yeah. that, and there's been funds prior to this as well. It, it just seems like from, from a regular general public person, we're, we're having a hard time seeing progress because it costs so much and it takes so long. And by the time I get a chance to write it, I, I, I may be retired, I, I suppose, by then. Is there not a way to speed things up a little bit so we can see some progress? Well, you know, that is that is absolutely a good question. And, you know, it, I think there are options around, um, uh, you know, trying to find ways to make studies go a little bit quicker, trying to prioritize projects a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, more consciously, you know, trying to figure out how, how we can, um, uh, you know, whether this project should come before this one, uh, whether this project enables, uh, you know, another one. Uh, you know, when you look at subway projects and things like that, yeah, there's no question they do take a lot of time. And it's it, one thing that we could consider paying attention to is there's sometimes a trade-off between short-term disruption, uh, uh, between level of disruption and length of disruption, I should say. So sometimes if you accept a little bit more disruption, you might get the project done faster. Right. Uh, you know, if that's working overnight or or you know, stuff like that. I am, uh, I am willing to accept more disruption and get things done so that you and I can actually see it and, and, and enjoy it. Um, I hope this works, but I think there's a lot more projects still on the plate. We'll see how this one goes. Um, Jonathan, really appreciate your time on this. Thank you. Thank you very much.